In this video, we're gonna go from this to this. So today we're gonna block a 980 Ti. Stick around. All right, so obviously we're starting with a reference design 980 Ti. Um, and the water block we've gone with is the EKFC Exitel from EK. Now this is designed for the GTX Titan X. However, uh, EK doesn't make a water block specifically for the reference design 980 Ti, which is what we have here. Uh, the 980 Ti and the Titan X from NVIDIA are nearly identical. The screw placement on the back of the PCB to mount the cooler is identical. Uh, the way the VRM and everything is set up on the PCB itself is all exactly the same. Uh, the only thing is there's just less uh, of, of the thir certain things in there. <laughs> um, so what EK suggested is just to use their Titan X block, which is what I've done. I went ahead and got two of them. I got one card done already. I have the other block in the packaging right here. Comes in a very nice box. So we'll go ahead and open that and we're gonna get started. So let's get this open, get the block out. All of our hardware and everything comes in here. So there we have all of our hardware. We got more thermal paste, thermal pads, uh, instruction guides. I've already blocked this card and this was the exact same sort of uh, steps and whatnot that you have to take that I did with my four R9 290s because they had the same blocks. So this is all pretty straightforward to me, so I don't really need any of the instructions or anything. However, I will walk you guys through it step by step. So right away, we're gonna get rid of this card here, set it aside because that's gotta go into the system once we're done. Also, you'll notice there's a, uh, a terminal link here. So this is to mount all the cards together on the one sort of block. My uh, R9-290s are on a four-way block of this, which I, I have downstairs. So that's just gonna keep uh, everything nice and rigid, prevents card sag, because they are a lot heavier with the water blocks on there. And it just makes it easier putting it in and out all as one whole unit than putting it in and dealing with tubing and whatnot. But we'll talk more about that later. So I'm gonna set that back here. Grab my screwdriver. And we have to remove Quite a few screws. Here we go. So on the back of the PCB, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, uh, 19, 20. 20 screws that we have to remove. Uh, card's been off long enough that I can hold it. Yeah, should be fine. So all you gotta do it's a good idea to keep like a little container or something nearby so you can throw all the old hardware in. Once we mount the block, I'm gonna put all of this stuff into a baggie with the factory air cooler and I'm gonna pack it away all together so if I ever need to do anything with the card, sell them, RMA them, anything like that, I have all the factory hardware and the factory cooler ready to go. should come apart relatively easily. There we go, yeah, you see that? Now, here's the next thing. The LEDs for the GeForce logo are plugged in right there. You wanna carefully disconnect that. You don't wanna damage any of the wires. And again, for the blower style fan on the back, there's another, uh, another header connection there. You gotta disconnect that as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay the card. Mm, let's do it this one first. So just make sure you get in there, grab it, tug it out. Now originally I tried using pliers to do this and I find they slip off and you just have more control with your fingers. It's just you really got to give a tug. Like too much of a tug for uh, how big these connectors are. There we go. All right and now we can open up the card flat and get the other one safely. 
And there we go. That's disconnected. The factory air cooler is off. I love how these look. I really do. It's a shame that uh, they run so hot at low RPM. You play, you put them at high RPM on the fan. They run pretty cool, but they're really loud, 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 loud. I really wanted to get away with not water cooling these cards just because I love how they look. But the fact of the matter is, um, for the 1400 megahertz overclock that I have on them, which isn't very high at all, uh, they get hot, even at idle. And if you want them to run cool, they're loud as shit. So, this is what I have to do. So here we are. Here is a naked 980 Ti. You got the GPU in the center, all the memory and everything. And now another thing I like doing that I think everyone should do as well is, if you look on the back of the uh, heatsink, the factory one, you see like this little bit of a residue of where the thermal pads used to be. What I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna take all of the factory thermal pads off and place them back where they belong. And what that will do is when I go to put the air cooler back on, if I ever need to, everything's gonna go back in the right spot. They're gonna stay, uh, they're not gonna get damaged. I'm not gonna have to put new ones or anything like that. It's just gonna make life easier just in case. And I always like to prepare for just in case scenarios. So all you have to do literally is just Peel them up and then follow the uh, silhouetted diagram that was left on there and put them back. Now that that's done, that's what it looks like. Put all your thermal pads back. You can choose to clean this up now or later. Uh, chances are, if I ever have to put the air cooler back on, I'll just clean it up then and then uh, put new thermal grease. But we're pretty much done with this, so I'm gonna set that aside. So now we're gonna clean up the PCB. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use 100% or 99% isopropylene. Isopropylene. This, I'm gonna use this alcohol and I'm going to put some of it onto these cotton swaps, which are basically just these little pads. You have an abrasive side and a soft side. I'm going to use a soft side. Basically, I'm just going to do this. A little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. And then I'm going to clean off the original thermal paste on the chip. Just like that. And the thing about alcohol is, if you look, give it a wipe, it evaporates very quickly. And it gives you a super, super, super clean finish. Uh, excellent surface to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off all the memory chips as well. Um, just from any sort of little residue that the old thermal pads left. I'm gonna give all those a quick wipe. New thermal pads are going on them. So. That's not too big a deal. But there we go. Super simple. Nice and clean. Doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, you're gonna get thermal grease around the air, around the chip. It's just, it's gonna happen no matter what. So, nothing really to worry about. So, next. Thermal pads. Now with the EK blocks, they come pre-cut, which is really nice. Diagram here, it wants you to do this. Right? So this, We'll cover the entire thing. I'll snip it off there. Right up there, I'll cut it. And you'll know just lay it right across here. That's that. Yeah, okay, we'll do that.
Holy shit. Like I've literally spent the same amount of time taking this plastic shit off as I have taking the cover off and prepping the entire car. Ah. So anyways, there we go. That's what it should look like. And like I said, I like to put the blue side up so that I know that I didn't leave anything on there because there's also the clear side and it looks pretty much the same. And you just have to be careful of that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna pull out the block, which is neatly packed into this box. So here's the block itself. Put this right there. There it is, all packed up. So I am going to open this. And first thing, I usually like to inspect, make sure there's all like scuffs and gouges or damage, and it's fine. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take a new cotton swab again. And we're gonna wipe the entire thing down just to get any sort of grease or oil or anything from the manufacturing process that could still be on there completely off. Next part, it's putting the thermal grease on. So now that the block is nice and clean and ready to go, I'm going to take my thermal pad, or sorry, thermal grease, which is the Ectotherm from EK. Yeah, there. And they say just apply it in a star pattern, which is pretty much what I'm gonna do. You can put a dot in the center, or however, do whatever the hell you want, really. I'm just gonna put it like this. When it first comes out, it comes out a lot. You just gotta be careful. There you go. I'm gonna do that. I mean, it's never gonna be perfect. But I just like to do a bit of a star. That is uh, <laughs> that's that's my star, everyone. No, that's uh, that's terrible. But uh, more or less, the second the GP or the water block is placed on it, it's gonna smush it out in all directions to be a nice solid cover. Um, I've done things like this. I've also done before where I would take uh, like one of these and just spread it out as thin as possible. It, it doesn't make a difference. It really doesn't. You just spend more time just wasting time, really. Uh, it's not gonna care. It's gonna have a nice solid connection. So now we are going to the reason I have this at the edge of the desk too is because the IO panel is on there too and I want to keep it flat. So you just have to be careful while doing this. Uh, you're gonna take your card or your block and you're gonna line it up exactly where it needs to be. I like to stand over top and um, just sort of line everything up. There is pretty much where it's going to be. Now, I'm going to dump all the hardware for the water block in here. Take out some of the things that I don't need in there. And now each screw is getting a washer. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all these plastic washers and I'm going to lay them over top of every screw hole that's getting a screw. you got all your screws put back in the only thing to note is right here you get uh, there's a much longer travel for the screw into the block it's got to go all the way down here you get a couple of extra long ones you'll you'll easily see the difference between them uh, that's what one of those are for but again this 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 and this are not used because the block doesn't cover them but all in all that's it that's literally all there is to blocking a cart just be careful and that's it